nice pretty repair panel mostly done in the bead roller and with hand tools there's the rust it's the only rust we found in the top side of it so let's make this panel here we are, I've started to lay out my two patterns using tape. Well, my first pattern is just one single strip and I've marked all the radius and flats where they begin and where they end. The next one, I've taken tape and I started going horizontally. Then I made another pass, vertical, another horizontal, vertical, and then horizontal again. And that's given me, it's built up like almost like a plywood has. That's not, it will memorize some shape. It's not like a flexible shape pattern because this kind of tape can stretch a little bit. But what this is gonna do is, there's an arc here. That's not a perfectly straight line. It's got a very subtle arc. And I wanna see what that arc looks like once it's laid down flat on a piece of panel. And that's what that's gonna do. It's gonna memorize these lines. And I've also come in and marked where the radius begins and ends everywhere I need to. So I'm gonna come through, take my razor knife, I'm gonna cut some nice straight lines onto it. And then what I'll do is at the edge of this straight line, I'll put a strip of tape so I know where this pattern begins and where it ends. And I'll also mark it with a piece of marker. And then I can start laying everything out on a piece of sheet metal. So I'm gonna get this cut and then we'll get started on a piece of panel. Here we are, I have marked it with a marker right next to the tape. Set a tape line to show me my edges on both sides. And we can peel the pattern. I'll make sure I get down to that base layer of tape. Now, if your tape is super sticky, you might wanna take a little bit of baby powder and uh, just put a little bit of baby powder on the parent material, just kind of dust it. And uh, it'll help it keep from sticking too much. So we've caught the whole damaged area between our pattern. Our pattern is a little bit bigger than what we're actually going to make the part. So we should be good to go. So now I know when this lays out how that arc translates onto a flat piece of panel. So here's a straight edge. And you can see that there is a definite gap in the middle of touching at both ends. And that's that arc that I was talking about. So another measurement that I'm going to take is I took a sweep and I found which sweep fit it best in between those two points. You can see that a number 10 fits it really well. Now, if I didn't have a sweep, what I would do is I would put something on here to support it as if the glass was in place because this is flat in this dimension for where the glass went. What I would do is I would put some supports in here, here, maybe one here, take a piece of uh, poster board to put down, then use a washer to give me an offset, and I would roll that washer right along that arc and mark that piece of uh, poster board. And that's one way that I could transfer that arc without having a sweep. So I took a blank, and I took my shape finder, and I put a radius very similar in the break to what I need for that part. Now, when we go to bead roll this, I need to have a little bit of tail so I can have some leverage to create some of this shape. That's why it's so long. I, I need a place to put my hand and have leverage on it. Laid out all of my positions in the pattern. And now what I'm doing is I'm starting to put that number 10 arc I do a little bit of stretch on the very outside and then I slowly, easily work that stretch inward to where it, it, it changes this arc. Um, and you can see I've got it pretty close. I got a little more work to do on this end, a little more work to do on that end. But slowly work it into where it has that number 10 arc. Like I said, I'm just coming out here you can see where I've already stretched it on that one end a little bit. And then once it's stretched on that end, I just slowly work it and relax very easily so that, that stretch works its way all the way in to our flanged edge. So 
here we are as you can see i got it fitting a number 10 sweep really nice okay and we put a pretty good amount of stretch right here to where it deflected the material and then slowly with gentle pressure pulled it and you could feel that deflection relax and it go back flat until we had it all the way here and that extra material on that outer edge slowly worked into here gave it that arc so the next step is to set this bead so i'm going to go over to the bead roller get the bead roller set up and we're going to put in that detail and that detail will act like a lock it'll help hold everything in place and give it this shape that it needs so this set of rounding over dies happens to have this stop and this shape is just what we need for this part the only problem is if I put this bolt in here, the bolts just stick out too far. We're not going to be able to work it. But we're fortunate because the pressure is going to be down and in. So it's going to keep this in place. Um, my other big bead roller is set up with flush bolts so that I can operate without having to do this. But in this case, I'm going to run it without a bottom bolt. I'm going to try to set the camera up so we can film as we go. And what I'm aiming for is to set that blue line right where the radius drops down and meets the flat. You can see now why that tail is so important for me to have leverage over the panel. And I'm just running a light little bit of pressure just as like a practice run. I'm not doing a lot of shape. I'm just getting a feel for how it's going to go through the machine. I'm going to wind in an extra half a turn of pressure. After it starts to get some shape, it's going to basically run on autopilot like it's on a set of railroad tracks. You can already see it's starting to put that shape into it. That's it. It's all the pressure I can apply right now. There's the shape. So let's go compare it and we'll move on to the next step hard to see but as you can see it's not quite enough the, that one radius is fine but that's a little bit shallow so I think what we can do is we can set up another beading die and we can set up a uh, skateboard lower wheel and we can add a little bit to the inside of that so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna give that a shot when I went to set it up I noticed that there's just too much flange here it interferes so the next thing we're going to have to do is tip this edge in order to get rid of that extra material. Once again, I'm not running a lower bolt because of clearance issues, but I'm using my upper tipping and I got a lower skateboard wheel. And that's what I'm going to use to begin this uh, tipping operation on our line here. I will use a skateboard wheel just to set it and then I will switch to a hard lower wheel to finish it. Now with the skateboard wheel being soft, I am going to run more pressure than I normally would. I'm going to run right down tight and let the cushion of that skateboard wheel do its job. And I'm just going to run right on my line. And 
You can see how it started to give it a little bit of a tip and it set a line. And that's gonna help us when it comes to tipping the rest of that. So let me run it one more time. Now I'll switch to a solid lower die and we'll finish the tipping operation. With that little bit of tip onto it, I can now run the lower bolt. Now, when I run this and tip this edge, there's enough material here, there's enough area or what you would call shape for it to sit flat. But with it having that number 10 sweep arc this way, there's too much material. So as I tip it, it's gonna start distorting really weird and I'm gonna to need to come in and shrink the edge of this right in this area along the tip of that flange in order to bring it back and correct that number 10 sweep and to keep this flat. And we're just gonna raise maybe five degrees at a time. We're not gonna go quick at all. And this is where that tail comes in so handy so that I can have leverage to be able to do this. There we go. We've tipped that flange around. So now I'll come in and if I need to, I'll just give it that little bit of shrink. I don't know if you can see it, but it is distorted. It's a little bit low here and it has a pocket of extra material here. I'll come in and shrink that to where it goes right back to being nice and flat. And then that should give us the extra room we need to be able to fit inside of here, inside of the bead roller to correct that radius. That's hard to see but you can see it's distorted. See how it's high and then it's low. That's that distortion because there's too much material right now to keep that shape. And once we have it, now that this is flanged over, that gives us room to sit inside the bead roller and correct this radius. Skateboard wheel lower and a regular 3 8 beading die upper. And that's what I use I run it through and it'll just tighten that radius up. So now I want to tighten up where the radius meets the flat and I'll set up a different way to do that. So now I've set up like this in order to just tighten that line up from where we just went through with the skateboard wheel. And I'll just run it through like that. The sideways, the downward pressure on this is pressing in on that line. And this is just allowed to float on the top. And I think it, it does help crisp it up a little bit. Now we have a nice crisp line back with that radius. I have trimmed down some of that extra excess because I didn't need it for the extra leverage and I've cut that notch to go around where the windshield pops up. So now we'll start taking a look at how it fits. As you can see, we're not bad. Um, it still needs a little bit of fine tuning. Seems like this is a little flatter than what I have and this is sitting up just a bit. So I need to try and take that and get that down into there. Also, this top is a little bit away. Now, when I go to weld it, I'm going to be way down here when I weld it because I want to use this shape in order to help uh, lock it from having too much distortion in that weld. So I want to be down here somewhere with the weld. But I want it to fit really well, and there's just too much material up here. We had to stretch that to get that number 10 arc this way, but now that this is correct... The shape actually needs to lay back down. In order to do that, I think a little bit of shrink in here might do it. Um, 
I'm gonna take a look at it and see if I can figure out a way to clamp it to where I can maybe use the shape of the truck itself to help guide me in, uh, in cleaning this up. Maybe use a, uh, a caulking tool and come in here and tighten some of this up. Uh, once I have that sorted out, I'll uh, take the next clip. I ended up not having to shrink that. A little bit of dolly work on the post dolly to give it a slight radius and to overbend that took care of it. So what I did then is I, I took my body hammer and I came in and I just nosed it to give it that little bit of flat. And I took my cross peen, my cross peen, and I struck it with my poly hammer and tightened that back up. You can see it, it fits really well now. The other side is just as good. I think a little bit more fine tuning and we'll be good to go. Um, my next step, I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding and I'm gonna media blast it to clean up the profile. And uh, let's start trimming it, getting it a little closer. And if I need some more fine tuning, I'll do it. But that's how we made this panel. I'll clean it up and give it a look. 